Eve Norman Marks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your Oculus Go headset into a powerhouse gaming PC for as little as $10. Stay tuned to find out how. Right, first up, the only extra kit you really need is a gamepad, whether it's a Bluetooth controller or an Xbox One X Bluetooth controller. Either of those choices will be perfect and will help you a lot in getting this all set up. What we will be doing is signing up to Vortex Cloud Gaming. So if you don't know what that is, that's basically a bunch of PCs off in some other country that are connected to the internet with a nice graphics card in that are running certain games and you can remotely dial into them and play the games and relatively low latency. So it's originally created for, you know, if you've got a low power PC, you can play on there. There's apps available on your tablets or your phones and you can access sort of full on games that way. You can also sideload the Android TV version of the Vortex gaming app to your Oculus Go and play full PC games that way. So you have to sideload the app. I'm not gonna go into how to sideload. So sideloading apps are apps that are not made for Oculus Go. They're not available directly on the Oculus Go, but you can download them separately, connect your Oculus Go to a PC, and then sideload the app to it, and then it becomes available in Oculus TV on the Oculus Go. So the Oculus TV app had an update recently that added full controller support. So before that, we only had a couple of buttons that worked. You couldn't really use full controllers and so not all apps worked. Now a lot more apps do. So cloud gaming is one of those things that works great. So what that means is in Oculus TV, where you've got that nice sort of 100 inch, 120 inch screen, you can project, you know, Fortnite, CSGO, League of Legends, any other kind of game that you want to play onto that screen and be able to play it via Vortex Gaming and technically your Steam account. I'll leave details down below to where you can get the Vortex app and how to download, so make sure you check out those links. So if you use my link vortex.remarkers.com, when you sign up, I'll then get a little kickback. So it helps support this channel. I'm not officially affiliated with them, but I have signed up to their affiliate program, and I think it gives me 10% back on every purchase that's made on the site. So if, it would help me a lot if you go through my link if you do sign up. I'm very much appreciated. It helps me keep doing these videos, being able to buy all the latest for new releases, the latest Go releases, all that sort of stuff. It really would help. I'll start loading the app. It's all ready. Let's jump into Oculus TV and take a look. Right, so here we are in the Vortex app within Oculus TV. So once you've side loaded it, it will appear in Oculus TV and you can then just boot it up like this. This is the home screen. Uh, you can press the home button on your Oculus Go controller to get rid of the menu at the very bottom there if you want to. Uh, what you've got for all these, all these apps, a lot of them are paid for. Some of them you need to log into your Steam account to be able to access if you've already opened them up and got the license for them. Um, but there are also a bunch of free apps in here as well. So a lot of free games as well that come as part of your subscription, uh, which kind of range from anything from League of Legends to H1Z1. So if you use your controller to kind of point at the screen and scroll around, you can move up and down. Top left hand corner, you've got the option there. Make sure you log into your account there. So vortex.remarkers.com, sign up your account there, and then make sure you log in, and then you should be able to access anything you've got unlocked. You can scroll down here, as I say, with the pointer, kind of pointing the screen and sort of click it up. And then if you click on this option here, you can see all the apps that are actually included as part of your subscription. So as I say, these are all sort of free games and apps uh, that you could play anyway. But obviously, if you don't have a PC power enough, powerful enough to play it, you uh, you know you can still play these games and apps in, in pretty decent quality. So everything from League of Legends to Battle Right to H1Z1 to even Fortnite, which I'm sure is a, a an app or a game that a lot of people will want to play. And probably one of the main reasons probably people will try and do this these days, to be honest. Uh, so as I say, these are all pretty much free games. Then if we uh, scroll down a little bit and well, I'll actually choose this option here. We can go into kind of the ones where you can see where it says license. So when it says license, it means, do you own it on Steam? So if you've got it on Steam, you can link your Steam account. You can go into your Steam account here and you can access these games that are supported as well. So these are all kind of installed on the remote machines. Um, so as you can sort of see, there's everything here from a lot of new releases to Monster Hunter, to Left 4 Dead, to Tomb Raider. Um, they mixed in some of the free ones in, in this list as well. So Rocket League's there. So if your system, so you can even play these on Xbox. It's an Xbox One app that you can install, and you can play PC games with the controller that way as well. So that's quite smart. But obviously we're playing this on Oculus Go, so uh, and it works quite well. So any of these games and apps, you just click on them just to start them, 
But let's uh, click on Fortnite because I think Fortnite is probably the the one game these days that most people want to play. People are obsessed with it. I know my kids are obsessed with it. So it logs in. It puts us in a little queue. Sometimes I've never waited more than sort of two or three minutes for a, a, a remote PC to become available. It never usually takes long. I think the longest I've waited is thirty seconds, maybe. Um, and then you can just give it a little while to load up. I know uh, Fortnite is always one that takes forever to load up. Even on my kids when they're playing uh, Fortnite on their Xbox, it takes forever. Uh, we've got the on-screen controls here. You can bring up a keyboard pressing that button at the top left-hand corner. So if you need to type anything in, which we will need to do, uh, we will have to do that in a second. It's still loading up. Takes forever. God. I don't know what the obsession with Fortnite is, but... Uh, the, the, the game the game's expensive i know it's a free to play game but those skins oh, they cost like 20 quid each extortionate and i'm somebody who's addicted to collecting stuff as well and i say that uh you know all right so you've got some options top left hand corner you can uh change some of the sort of layouts and button controls and, and stuff like that. input devices uh you can also change the the buttons for the controller so if you've got your bluetooth controller connected and then you've got quality settings. So quality settings is kind of, you know, how much your connection can handle, uh, you know, how high can you go, basically. So the higher you can set the setting, the higher the quality will be. So by default, maybe leave it as that, but you can always bump it up and down depending on what your connection can handle and click that little button top left-hand corner to keep going back in again. And then if you finished a game, you want to kind of get out, you just click the exit game button. And it's still loading Fortnite. It's only gone halfway. Oh, it takes forever, this thing. We'll just uh, hang in there. So we've got ourselves a nice little living room here. It's a shame we can't have somebody sitting here playing with us. As I say, you can press the uh, Oculus Go button to get rid of that menu there. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, in the future we get some more backgrounds for this. It'd be nice to have a void and maybe a bit more control over the the screen size and that sort of thing. Oh, so here we go. We have now need to log into our Epic account. So I'll do that. All you need to do is double click on um, one of the fields with your pointer uh, to log into it and then bring up the keyboard start typing into it and then put the keyboard away and then double click on the next field and keep going until you got log in for this one you do need a password as well so i've logged in here we are and you can as i say you need to double click with your pointer to be able to select different things we'll get rid of this uh touch um layout because it's obviously thinking this is a, an android device which it technically is so it's got the buttons on there Let's choose uh, that, and there we go, we're in Fortnite. So as you can see, it's running quite well. Uh, this is only the menus, but you know, there's a little bit of stutter occasionally. Um, but you are cloud gaming, as I say, it's all based on your PC, um, all, all based on your sort of connection settings. So the better you can kind of, you can do that, the cleaner you can make it, get things off your connection. Um, as I say, reboot your headset and reboot your, your router if you can. Um, just kind of give you the best opportunity to keep a nice clean connection and you should get a nice smooth gameplay experience so let's uh, queue up for a game quickly I won't play a proper full game I'm terrible at um, Fortnite anyway so we don't need to see me fail like that uh, I can't kill anyone to save me life I prefer some uh, co-op games but as you can see it, it loads up quite well it looks quite good you can, you can set the in-game settings and bump them up quite high but I tend to let the games kind of just set the recommended levels because you want the kind of smoothest uh, connection you can. If you do have any um, issues, just lower the quality in the menu. Um, or if you don't have any issues, increase it. So here you go. Now we're in Fortnite and it controls pretty well. There's a, a little bit of delay, but it's hardly noticeable. So there we go. There's a quick overview of how to stream cloud games from a PC for $10 a month to your Oculus Go so you can play full PC games with a controller on your Oculus Go and have that kind of full experience. You know, as I say, it does kind of depend on your connection. You have to keep testing. It's not perfect. It could be a little bit better. But I will drop the Vortex guys a, a message as well. So letting them know what's going on. Letting them know that we're now playing their games via our Oculus Go. Maybe they can do some tweaks and some some performance improvements that will help us on our Oculus Go's get an even better connection and a better setup. Maybe they'll drop us some advice and I'll leave that in the comments down below. As I say, if you use my link, vortex.remarkers.com, I get a little kickback from their website for everyone who signs up, which, you know, that's your way of giving back to me. 
be appreciated if you could do that but no issues if you don't want to I mean, it doesn't cost you anything extra to do it but you know no issues if you don't want to i'm not gonna hold you to it let me know in the comments down below how you get on does it work for you do you have any issues are there any tips or tricks you can leave for any other people let me know in the comments down below also let me know are there any other gaming platforms any sort of cloud gaming platforms that work as well that you've tried and you know you'd recommend let us know i'll be interested to see and i'll try those out as well give the video a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't that's fine i'm big enough and ugly enough to take it if you didn't like it but do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it and i'll try and do better for next time become one of the remarkables hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when i next upload a video and that's me done have a virtual high five